Welcome, it's Sinom, and welcome to This Week in Crypto. This week, it looks like we're headed for another bearish week, and um, Ethereum, it is hitting back against the scaling issues it used to have, and they are actually promising 100x scaling on Ethereum just in a matter of weeks, so we're going to talk about that one. And it looks like a lot of the crypto valuations are completely wacky, in my opinion. They don't make sense. So there's some clear opportunities in my opinion as well as something to avoid so i will talk about that at the end of the video when i talk about some of the altcoins for this week as well so let's just talk about bitcoin first so as you can see on this chart you can see the amount of bitcoin entering or exiting exchanges and right now bitcoin is entering exchanges like uh, at a massive uh, speed and this usually signals bearish momentum for bitcoin because when people deposit Bitcoin on exchanges, they usually want to sell their Bitcoin. So it looks like a lot of people are wanting to take profits right now. And uh, I'm expecting to see something like we saw here in February, uh, in late February. So a one week or two weeks of bearish action on Bitcoin, as well as it could take down even the altcoins. And I would not be surprised if that happened, just because the altcoin market is in a weird position, in my opinion, right now. So if we take a look at closer on the Bitcoin chart, uh, the Bitcoin chart, I thought we we're going to head it actually down from here because we had a bearish divergence here on the RSI, but on, uh, we did not go down. We went up and then we really came down right now. And that's where we are now at $55,000. So unfortunately, I was not able to make this video sooner. Uh, I'm sure if we had known this uh, bearish momentum that's going to take place, that would have been better. So this support line here that we had from the previous all-time high, it, we came and touched it and we came and touched it here again. It did not hold. So this is not looking really uh, super good for Bitcoin going forward. And we also broke through this uh, bottom trend line here as well. So we're currently at 55,000. So it could still be the case that we follow the uh, other chart that I, I sort of had last week uh, as well, that we're going to head for the new all-time AHI here or test it and then try to test it again. And then from here, basically go down and retest this longer term trend line here on the bottom. So this yellow trend line here, it would be a lot, it would make a lot of sense if we actually came down and actually tested this area here. So to see Bitcoin to go even lower, as low as 40 of, uh, 48,000 or $50,000, I would not be super surprised if that were to happen. But in the long run, I think Bitcoin still is a good play, but I have personally been taking uh, uh, stable coins throughout this weekend uh, from coins that uh, have gone up and even some coins that have consolidated I have taken some profits out and put those into stable coins as well but anyway uh, let's see how far Bitcoin will go down throughout the video but now let's talk about some of the big news that happened which are um, messing up the markets as well so the first one is actually that now <laughs> there's some news spreading around saying that India will actually continue to ban cryptocurrencies. So in this article, they said that India will propose a law banning cryptocurrencies, fining anyone trading in the country or even holding digital assets, said a senior government official. So this is the issue I have with this news right here, is that an anonymous person is saying that they are a senior government official, saying that India will ban cryptocurrencies, criminalized possession, issuance, mining, trading, and transferring crypto assets. But there's no such bill available, never seen, no one even has a leak of that a proposal right now from India. But what we have here is the finance minister of India, Nirmala Sitharaman, uh, who said this month that I can only give you this clue that we are not closing our amounts. We are looking at ways in which experiments can happen in the digital world and cryptocurrency. And that was from the finance minister who actually has a name. So in my opinion, this bearish news here doesn't hold ground just because it's from an anonymous person who claims to be a senior government official. And these news outlets are just spinning this around, uh, saying that India will ban crypto. 
unfortunately i just don't believe that is the correct case and i unfortunately i'm quite sad to see that news outlets are letting news like this go unchecked and they don't even uh speculate who is this person or like what authority this person actually has to say just a random senior government official is saying that they will outright go and uh find people for just holding bitcoin just doesn't make any sense in my opinion and like it says here in the in the article eight million investors already have crypto in india so to go after that eight million people i don't think that's good for the economy or even doesn't, doesn't make much sense in my opinion anyway that's it for that news uh next uh michael burry so you probably know him from the big short who shorted the housing market back in 2008 uh, he actually went ahead and deleted almost all of his tweets saying anything about the market conditions leaving 400,000 followers with only music and restaurant comment, uh, recommendations on his twitter profile so what michael burry has been saying at least recently is that uh, he was short on tesla in december and he thought the gamestop uh, stock price has been insane and dangerous and he has been warning the public about coming inflation and the reckless government uh, interference of the marketplace and the massive uh, 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 over valuations of different companies on the uh, stock exchange as well so i think he is currently holding a lot of cash I think that's his play right now. I don't know if he's short or not, but I think cash is pretty much the play that he's going after right now. But I don't think he's the uh, uh, most knowledgeable person on the planet because he said that Bitcoin is a speculative bubble. But I do agree with him that markets are really in a bubble territory on the stock market and even the housing market and almost all the markets out there and even crypto could be in a bubble and certainly i can see that in some crypto areas as well especially in some of the uh you would say premium DeFi coins i think are massively overvalued in my opinion i'll talk about those later anyway that's michael burry there and if we and now we have to talk about the macroeconomics a little bit and this is the reason why i'm quite bearish on the like on the macroeconomic scale of things so if we take a look at the 10-year treasury rate it's currently at 1.64 percent so the uh, loaning rates is going up so this is good for people who want to save money but this is bad because most people they take a loan against a mortgage against their house so if the yields or the interest rates actually start going up it means that people cannot pay those mortgage fees as much as they could before so even a one percent move on a three hundred thousand dollar house means that you have to pay almost three hundred dollars more every single month just to keep that house and just to pay for the interest payments alone so <clears throat> if interest rates keep going up it means that less people can afford higher housing prices so eventually if interest rates go up and up and up uh, it would mean also that the housing market would have to start going down because people cannot afford uh, as uh, expensive houses as they can currently with these basically zero percent loans so if these continue to go up that's pretty uh, bad for the economy but also if these go lower uh, where if the fed tries to keep this artificial artificially low it also fuels the inflation fears which is good for bitcoin right so we want this to actually be down if you are holding bitcoin and not go up because if it goes up it means that markets melt down but if this actually stays down it means that markets melt up and it's quite hard to predict if markets will melt down or up so for me i'm currently holding like uh, a lot of the uh, uh company coins and bitcoin and some premium coins out there and the coins that i think are undervalued uh, as well as just stable coins because i don't want to lose value if we see another market correction on the market as well so it's like a mixture of both both strategies uh, makes a lot of sense in my opinion just betting on one outcome just doesn't make as much sense in my opinion next uh ethereum uh vitalik buterin is saying that it will scale 100x in just a matter of weeks so vitalik buterin he went on a podcast with uh, i think it was tim ferris yeah tim ferris's podcast 
and he said here that Optimism will release its layer 2 scaling solutions in the coming weeks and that would scale Ethereum by a factor of 100x and this is what is also messing up the markets a little bit because this was an offshoot podcast where this was said so people are now speculating okay how serious was Vitalik and how fast can these actually be implemented because Optimism it would uh, not be a side chain for Ethereum. It would just mean that you basically create a bubble inside, uh, or like a like a shell around each DAP. So you can make transactions, you can make swaps inside that one single DAP without basically paying gas fees. That's how I understand Optimism rollouts will actually work. But anyway, when these happen, he said he's saying here that they can actually scale up to one thousand or four thousand transactions per second without uh, going into Ethereum 2.0 staking solutions. So even with the current ETH 1.0 blockchain, uh, we can see these kinds of transactions per second when they are fully uh, utilized. But again, we don't know how fast this can actually be implemented and how much of a hurdle and security risk these will be when uh, these are in use. So there's a lot of uh, speculation going on right now but if this actually works like it is indented then it's not really bullish for other uh, smart chains out there so ethereum if this actually works uh, will probably attract liquidity back and the basic users back into the ethereum ecosystem but we'll see how things go personally it's very hard for me to believe that it will just magically work exactly like they want it to and it will have immediate effects on the on the scaling uh, problems of ethereum so we'll see how things go but they are saying in around a month or so so personally uh, i have sold some of my bnb just uh, because it went up so much compared to ethereum already i bought a little bit ethereum for myself and uh, bitcoin and the stable coins and so forth anyway that's it for the uh, scaling. We'll see how things go, but we will have to look at this closely in the coming weeks. And if, let's say, uh, one of the big bets that I currently hold is Auto Farm. If Auto, Auto Farm doesn't have big moves in the next two, two weeks or so, then I will probably have to sell it at a loss. But uh, we'll see. Uh, the next two weeks, I'm still giving it time because the Ethereum 2.0 scaling is not going to happen in the, at least in a week. So we'll see how that goes. Next, uh, it's not only Shansan and Rainbows for Ethereum, because Ethereum miners are plotting a 51% collusion. Not a 51% attack, but a 51% 51% collusion. So as you probably know about the EIP-1559 that I talked about in the past, where miners would not earn as much fees as they currently earn. Uh, most are some of the miners, bigger miner pools, are actually planning to attack Ethereum uh, chain on April 1st. And when that happens, they are basically halting the whole Ethereum ecosystem in a standstill, and they want to negotiate a better deal for the EIP-1559. So they, uh, their goal is to basically make a compromise of the current EIP-1559 and what the miners want from the Ethereum gas fees as well. So we'll see how things go, if this will actually happen or not. But on April 1st, just be aware, aware that this is actually going to take place. And if they succeed, uh, it will cause some issues in the Ethereum network. Probably the price of Ethereum will go down quite a bit because uh, I think a lot of the news outlets will be calling it a 51% attack and that it's not secure and so forth. So I think that's another bearish a window that we could see we'll see if this actually happens or not but we have to keep an eye on it as well next uh bitcoin cash are saying that they will have a side chain with ethereum virtual machine capabilities and web 3.0 capabilities as well and here's the paper outlining it uh i don't know if this will actually get implemented or not but basically i what i'm thinking about bitcoin cash implementing this is that it doesn't matter at all because that not that many people are actually using Bitcoin Cash. And just for people to go to proof of work uh, system, it's like a back step. I don't think people will want to go to a proof of work system anymore because proof of stake is, in my opinion, a lot better in multitude of ways. So 
I think Cardano has a much better chance of succeeding than Bitcoin Cash sidechain. So we'll see how things go, but I think it was an interesting development as well. Next, this was a little bit annoying because uh, earlier last week, uh, Binance, the, or Binance CEO CZ, uh, he was shilling this BNB update or announcement for two or three days. And I thought it was going to be big, but they only uh, announced that they will be uh, hiring a US or ex-US senator who was also an ambassador for China or a US ambassador in China for a while to basically help with the compliance of the US government. So a lot of people, when they saw this, they're like, okay, this is nice. It helps. Now you have a lobbyist inside the United States uh, for crypto and for Binance. So things should be a little bit smoother but people were hoping for a bigger announcement than this. But this is what we got. Uh, it's overall good that we have another lobbyist for crypto inside the United States, but I don't think this will uh, significantly immediately improve the stance that crypto is where, where we are currently headed or where we even were headed. But yeah, there's a lot of FUD going on with Binance also right now because uh, they were under investigation uh, for allowing leverage trading for United States citizens. And there's a lot of videos out there how you can actually trade on with leverage on Binance, even if you are in the United States. So the accusations are actually true. So when that happens, uh, BitMEX, who used to be the biggest leverage exchange, they were basically taken down from the United States completely. And they currently only offer about 1% of the whole leverage trading uh, activity. So if that the same thing would happen to Binance, I don't see that as a bullish thing for the BNB token. So when I saw that, that's one of the reasons why I uh, sold a little, little bit of my BNBs uh, as well. And I think this move right here uh, is a countermeasure against that. So they, they can somehow maybe avoid the lawsuit or something like that. I don't know. So we'll see how things go, but uh, I, I, I don't know if this is a good or bad thing. <laughs> Next, uh, there's some speculation if the Binance smart chain activity is really true or is it fueled by bots? Is it paid or paid by the um, the uh, the Binance company itself? And some people have done some research around it. And after reading the whole thread, they basically said that our findings did not find much evidence to substantiate the narrative of largely fake activity plus bots. So the activity on Binance Smart Chain is probably pretty much true. I will link this in the description if you want to read the whole thing, but they basically checked many, many things and everything checked out that there's not bots or uh, uh, fake activity on Binance Smart Chain. So that that's at least a good thing going for BNB. Next, DeFi hasn't grown on Ethereum at all in the last month or even uh, last month and a half almost. So we're still at about $40 billion total value locked on Ethereum, uh, Ethereum blockchain. And on Binance Smart Chain, it hasn't really gone up as much either. But for some reason, DeFi station is a little bit slow nowadays. So for ex example, we are missing a lot of uh, platforms here like Value DeFi, which has $200 million total value locked. And then we have the uh, Alpaca that's missing here as well. And there were some other one, uh, big ones. So I think there's at least $2 billion more total value locked in Binance Smart Chain than just the $13 billion. But anyway, this has been going sideways quite a while as well, almost a month. So the whole DeFi is a little bit losing its momentum. So the speed we saw before, it has slowed down quite a bit. And that's one of the reasons why I think the big DeFi market cap coins are not as premium as they um, uh, as some people think they are. Anyway, that's uh, an interesting observa observation there, but it, it's looking like it's growing in the last few weeks. So hopefully, it will uh, these things will go up in both uh, in both chains as well. Uh, next, if we take a look at DappRadar.com, which uh, looks at all the different de decentralized applications on the internet. The one thing that I saw is that if you take a look at the seven day or even the 30 day changes, and you look at the amount of users different platforms have, you can see that Uniswap is number one on Ethereum, 
But number two is actually an NBA Top Shots, which works on the Flow blockchain. And uh, it's an NFT blockchain, basically, and they will have uh, DeFi capabilities. It is built by the uh, uh, Dapper Labs, which built the uh, CryptoKitties, as well as which developed the NBA Top Shots. So Flow, it could be a decent opportunity, but unfortunately, the tokenomics of Flow aren't super good. So for me, it was a pass, but uh, it's... Uh, interesting to see completely different blockchain uh, dominating this chart right here. Then we have Binance Smart Chain. Then we have Thundercore. I don't exactly know what Thundercore is. Uh, then we have another Binance Smart Chain, EOS Wax. This is a token I talked about uh, a few weeks ago in a video. Uh, I think Wax is probably one of the best NFT picks even now if you want to have exposure in NFT space. And uh, the Wax blockchain is basically the go to blockchain with NFTs right now. And Flow is also, but the tokenomics of Wax are just a little bit better than Flow. So for that reason, Wax made a lot of more sense, as well as the market cap of Flow was already more than 1 billion, where Wax was only 400 million. So Wax was just uh, better uh, in, in just like risk to reward ratio was better for Wax in my opinion. Anyway, Wax is here. Then we have Ethereum on Rarible, and they're seeing a lot of user growth as well. And then we have Tron, Binance Smart Chain, by the way, Autofarm is here. Binance Smart Chain, Binance Smart Chain, Wax, uh, Binance Smart Chain. And number 17 is ETH. So you don't really see Ethereum here on these charts at all. And previously, we already confirmed that the user activity is actually real and not fake. So Ethereum is not a blockchain that cannot be take. Uh, uh, that could not be replaced. So some people think that Ethereum is like the king of blockchains and that it will be the only blockchain that will be ever used in the future or even now. And they still don't believe these numbers that the users are actually voting with their money going into other chains out there as well. So we'll see which chains start to emerge here next. Currently, it's mostly about Binance Smart Chain. But in the future, I think it's going to be Cardano when they actually release the uh, smart chain capabilities and even maybe CRO chain, depending how fast they can get the DeFi going on there as well. We'll see how that goes. Next, I will want to talk about some of the crazy evaluations that I see on the market right now. So for, uh, the first one I want to talk about is just these massive DeFi protocols out there on the market. So Aave is the perfect example of this. So this is a premium protocol out there that allows you to lend and borrow. And that's basically the only thing they do. And Aave token is the governance token for that protocol. And if you take a look at the total value locked of Aave, it is $5.5 billion. Okay. And if you take a look at the market cap, it is $4.5 billion. And the fully diluted valuation of this protocol is $5.8 billion which is more than the total value locked in this protocol. And the growth, there's basically no growth on AVE either. So if you take a look at the AVE TVL, it's basically been the same since the, uh, for the last two months almost. So the total value locked is not really growing, but the market cap is still massive. But if we take a look at Venus, which does the same thing on Binance Smart Chain, they have more total value locked than AVE. So they have $200 million more than AVE. And the fully, even if you take a look at the fully diluted valuation, it is $1.3 billion or the current market cap of $400 million compared to the total value locked. I think there's a massive overvaluation of how valuable AVE actually is. And it's just because it was the first big lending platform that basically broke out that people trust this protocol. But there's as much innovation or even more going on in different protocols out there as well. So in my opinion, if you are in this, uh, like even in the Uniswap token, maybe Uniswap can be a good one when they release their version 3. But still, I think it is quite uh, overvalued compared to other ones out there. Like uh, even if we take a look at PancakeSwap, uh, they are going to release their version 2 soon, which they uh, outlined here. It looked quite beautiful, by the way. Let's see, did I, I unfortunately don't have the Twitter right me here for this video. But anyway, they have a version two of the pancake swap coming as well, which is supposedly gonna somehow counter the uh, 
Uniswap version 3 as well. So you will have a, like a dashboard and a real exchange uh, interface uh, on top of the PancakeSwap as well. So a lot of uh, in improvements in that area as well. Anyway, just wanted to showcase that I don't think the, the big market cap coins are as valuable as many people think. So if markets are going to go down, these are not the coins that I want to be in uh, just myself. And even when, when the or if the markets actually go down from the Bitcoin dump, uh, I'm not going to buy into these big DeFi protocol coins out there just because in, in the long run, I don't want to go to a protocol that doesn't have growth. So for that reason, I don't, I'm not interested in this. Maybe the Ethereum layer, so uh, layer two solutions will help, but because they're not live now, and I don't know how good they will be when they go live, I don't want to invest in this. That's just my thesis. Uh, you have, you can have your own opinion if you want to, but basically I just see these two having the same value while uh, this just has less market value right now and i think markets are stupid and that's what can make us have more money than uh, the other people next uh actually let's talk about auto farm real quickly so auto farm if we take a look at this one the price is again going down even though they are the biggest uh, uh yield aggregator on binance smart chain and they are heading towards cross-chain integrations and the cross-chain future as well. And the crazy thing right now is that if you take a look at the YFI holders, so if we take a look at YFI, which is the Yearn Finance, the crazy thing here is that the total value locked is $800 million, whereas on Autofarm that is $1.1 billion or $1.2 billion. So there's almost double the amount of total value locked in uh, auto farm but the market cap of yearn finance is 1.2 billion dollars whereas auto farm uh, market cap is only 60 million dollars so again i just don't see the value of yfi tokens yes they have better tokenomics and they have better token utility but all of that is coming to auto farm as well and they are the, the basically the biggest yield aggregator on Binance Smart Chain. So people ask me all the time, am I bullish on auto farm or not? If I compare to Yearn Finance, uh, yes, <laughs> hell yes. <laughs> There's just so much market cap gains to be made if you just compare the market cap of these two. And the total value locked on Yearn Finance is just so low compared to what it is on auto farm. And auto farm is constantly developing and building for the cross-chain future as well. Whereas YFI is just focused on Ethereum as far as I know. So for that reason, yes, I am bullish on auto farm as well. And some of the other coins that I'm still bullish on or I'm bullish on right now, or I shouldn't say bullish, but I think are good to uh, accumulate during this time. Uh, or if the prices go even lower, it may be good to actually uh, uh, pick these up or accumulate these ones. First one is sell token. I think Cell is a great token and even uh, Cell, they are finally being listed on another exchange. So this week they will be listed on Bitrex exchange and they will be listed on three other exchanges in the coming weeks as well. And there will be more utility for Cell because they can actually generate more yield with Cell token. In the future, they can use their treasury to generate more yield on Cell token. And if we take a look at the uh, technical analysis real quick, you can see that this trend line here, it is supporting this uh, this upward channel here. So if we actually uh, go up from here, we can actually go all the way up to about $16, $18 at the top of this channel. So that would be almost a 3x move for sell token if that were to happen. But personally, even if it goes to $9 or $10, it's still a really solid play in my opinion. They're getting 1,000 new dep depositors every single day. And all in all, it's just looking like really solid, uh, I, I would say low risk, high return play. So that's why I've been accumulating more sell token as well. Next, uh, I've been buying some CRO as well, just because it's a company coin and more retail people when they enter crypto, when, when they enter crypto into Google, crypto.com is the number one 
platform to actually be there the tokenomics make more sense than before so i did buy some zero as well uh, other coins that make sense is swissbox it's a solid company coin but nexo i would be a little bit careful with nexo because uh, they don't have as much assets under man management as cell token cell token has 10 billion dollars assets under management but nexo doesn't have that much while the market cap is almost the same as ne uh, celsius so ne celsius just makes a lot more sense in my opinion especially now uh, i think it's quite undervalued compared to nexo and many other places out there as well so cell token is a great pick uh, next one of course is band token it's a cross-chain oracle and they're securing uh, almost one tenth of the amount of link how much link is securing but the market cap compared to link is 1 50th market cap so i think band is a solid pick as well and it's supporting the cross-chain future so for that reason band makes just a lot more sense to accumulate at these levels uh other ones xbs i think it makes a lot more sense than ave tokens and uh i don't know if venus is going uh cross-chain or not but just because they have so much total value locked i think people will eventually want to trade this as well and i don't know why there's a lot uh how, how would i say prejudice against binance smart chain coins they're not being listed on different exchanges so what i'm currently seeing is a, a lot uh, a lot new protocols and projects they launch on some uh, uh, blockchain like ethereum and they immediately get listed on different exchanges and they the value just goes up immediately but they don't provide any value so for that venus uh, just makes a lot more sense because they already provide the value they already have a working product but they are not listed on any exchange yet so just to accumulate these at these price levels just makes a lot of uh, sense to me and the uh, the price has already had a significant pullback from the top as well so xbs uh, accumulating that makes a lot more sense as well and then of course we have auto and other projects out there as well sol i think like as an nft project sol is one of the good ones as well just because the market cap is so low and so they are providing nfts and they're providing uh, cross-chain nfts as well that's what they are aiming for as well so sol could be a good nft pick as well uh, with uh, waxp but currently i'm not buying waxp yet just because it had this massive run but it started to have a little bit pullback so i hope this actually makes a big, big a little bit bigger pullback than what it already has and then i will be looking to buy it buy more of it and all these tokens that i'm talking about right now all of this uh will probably uh, go further down if bitcoin goes further down as well so these are just coins that you may want to pick up if the price is right for you so if you think let's say mirror if it's better to buy at five dollars then you may want to wait if that price actually hits if it doesn't hit maybe you can find something else to buy during that time as well so right now the markets are quite hard to uh, pinpoint where they are headed because there's fud going on on almost all the chains out there and you're not exactly clear what's the biggest development going on and where the markets are headed so for that reason i just wanted to have so-called safe bets so that's why i have a lot of uh, stable coins bitcoin even i started to buy a little bit more ethereum and these com uh, big company coins that are gaining more and more users every single day and are getting more and more assets under management every single day so those are basically the plays that i currently have pretty uh i would say risk averse and boring but that's the situation right now because i don't exactly see where the markets are headed so for that reason i just want to go where i think funds are quite safe and maybe i will have a minus 20 percent uh, or minus 30 percent on my portfolio but that's why i have the stable coins ready to actually buy these pullbacks again and that's just uh, the play that i'm currently looking at and last week i've been searching a lot uh, a lot of different pr uh, protocols out there for stable coin yields so if you're interested in stable coin yields let me know in the comments and i might make a video about stable coin yields which are the best stable coin yields right now and if you have great ideas for stable coin yields let me know also so i can research that in the 
and today and tomorrow basically i think that's everything i had for this video uh i hope you're ready uh if this pullback actually takes us back to fifty thousand dollars we'll see if that happens or not but uh, let me know what you thought about this video thanks for watching consider subscribing and if you want by the way to participate in sell token or crypto.com i have the affiliate link so you earn free money if you sign these up if you, if you want to anyway that's it for this video hope you liked it consider subscribing i'll see you on the next video